Hello and welcome. Thank you for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover. And check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's handle some errors. And as the title said, don't be this guy. Don't do this. Do not leave your code like this. Make sure you're adding in some error handling. And let's get to that right now. So I just set up this little skeleton application. All I've done is update the styles so that it doesn't look terrible. And I have a button. When I click the button, it runs this async function that's pinging uh, an API that I have here in Svelte. If you're not familiar with how to do that, inside of SvelteKit, all you need to do to create your own API is come into the routes folder and create a new folder called API. And then inside of there, create a subfolder for any route that you want in your application. Inside of that subfolder, you create a plus server.js file. And inside this file, you just put whatever you want your API to be. In this case, it's just a get request. And once again, I am doing here what you should not be doing. And that is uh, trying to perform these actions without catching the errors. Using async await is great. It has its purpose. And that is to cover up with syntactic sugar, as they say. Uh, <laughs> all of the stuff that's happening behind the scenes. What await is really doing is this. It's fetch and then dot then for us. And if you're not going to use the dot then, dot then and dot then and dot then, and most importantly, dot catch, then you're leaving your errors for the application to deal with, in, in which case that means your application is going to crash. So the only thing I like more than the phrase syntactic sugar is using syntactic sugar. So I'm definitely not saying not to use async await. Uh, what I am saying is to make sure you wrap this in a try catch. So let's just take a look at what this is going to do for us right now. What happens when we click the perform action button? So like I said, I've got this button and when I click it, it's just going to run this function. This function is pinging our API and I purposely have the API set up to be uh, pinging a wrong URL with this fetch. So it's going to return an error, but I'm not handling that error anywhere. So let's just see what happens when I spit out the data, the JSON formatted version of the response uh, to the page. So let's click the button, perform action, and see what happens. So we see that we have internal error on our screen. We can see an error in the console and uh, also in the server running on the back end. So I have an error in three places being thrown. One thing I'll point out here though is that we pinged our own back end, our own API, and that portion always is going to succeed in SvelteKit. And I'll show you in a minute what I mean by that. So let's make some adjustments here. First of all, inside of this function, let's just add a try catch here. Try. And we're, what we're trying to do is all of this, right? So let's put that in there. And then we need to catch the error. Catch. And open it up for error. And then inside of here, whatever we're going to do here. So let's do page error equal to error. All right. And then let's also add a console.log into each. So let's say try. And we'll copy this one and post it down here and make this say catch. And let's see where this is landing now. So here we get internal error. And you'll notice here in the console, what was recorded was try, right? And the reason is because the only time you really hit uh, an outright error 
is when the server is essentially down and so the, the fetch doesn't go through at all and as i said this is svelte kit the api is my own i created it it's running here with this with the front end in parallel and so it's not going to outright fail so that's why we got try but what was returned was in fact a message from that api saying that the call failed what we want to do next is take this one step further let's go do the same thing to the back let's add a try and what we're trying is all of this and then a catch error parentheses and what we want to do is if it's an error we want to return uh, this would be, and here we actually, should, let's add a status just so that, uh, another object with status, 200, and then down here as well, comma, object, status, uh, this will be pr uh, 500, so say server error. And then let's put in something funny here, so let's say, your DB admin does not like you. They revoked your access and they didn't tell you those buggers. And then inside of here where we're sending back, I always, uh, just to point this out, I always have a standard uh, object that I send back in my applications when possible. Obviously, if I'm working on some client code that I can't change, uh, I'll make do with whatever. But if I can help it, I always have a standardized object that I'm sending from my APIs, from my backends to my front. That way I know what to look for in the front. It's just nice if you do a lot of development work and you're doing a lot of full stack work, make sure that you do this yourself. Come up with some standard object that you want to use and have that always be what you send from your APIs and your backends to your front so that you know what properties exist on that object. Yes, TypeScript will help with this a little bit, but just knowing what's there, you don't have to rely on the IDE. It will create a lot more consistency in your application uh, and when you're developing each page to have it that way. So now that we have a try catch here, let's see what we get back. So our backend call fails, although this time we're catching it. And so while we get in the console here, we do get an error which actually is kind of funny, but makes sense because we did send back a status of 500, uh, but we got our message because I sent that message to the front and here I in my try, um, I'm pulling out the message and putting it in that page error variable. But you'll notice that it does not technically mean an error because the, the call did happen to the API. So that's pretty cool. Now we're catching our error in our front. We're catching it on the server, so there's no server uh, error here. Uh, everything's all good because we're dealing with that error, so there's nothing being thrown by the back end. So that's pretty cool stuff, right? Let's take this one step further. So what's the next sort of thing that you would want to do after you're properly catching your errors and then giving your user some sort of message? Well, one really cool thing that we can do with SvelteKit Let's make a little reactive statement here. So let's do a dollar sign colon and let's say if page error is not equal to the empty string, then let's do a set timeout and this takes a function. I'm going to use an anonymous one and then how long you want to wait to run it. Let's just say four, sec four seconds, which this is in milliseconds. So 4,000, 4,000 milliseconds is four seconds. And then inside of here, what are we doing? Uh, all we're gonna do is say page error equal to empty string. And what is this gonna do, you might ask? Well, we are going to also import fade from, whoops, svelte slash transition and then inside of 
this H3. Right now, all I have is a style that makes it red, and we're only displaying it if it's there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add transition. No, it is spelled right. Okay. And this is two objects, an object inside of an object. And what we have here are two properties, delay, let's say 250, and duration, 300. And let's give that a save now. When we get our error, we have a nice little error message that pops up for our user and tells them what happened. Your admin doesn't like you, so, <laughs> so you can't get any access. Uh, and then it fades in and fades out. So this is a nice way of presenting those errors to the user. Now, inside of your page.svelte, in here, you also would have a lot more additional logic to check the status. So in your in your APIs and in your backends, we have status 200 if it's okay, 500 if it's an error. Uh, these are kind of generic. Status 200 just means you know everything's all good. Whatever action you wanted is was successful. Everything's gravy there. But there's actually a lot of other statuses that have specific meaning. Uh, and there's a lot of times where your API is going to return a status and it's not going to be an error because it's it's going to be a response. It's just not the response you're looking for. And that's here where you would want to do if uh, response dot status is not equal to 200 uh, or whatever you know that you're looking for. So you check for all of those different statuses and then set your error messages appropriately there. And again, leave that set timeout so that the error message is shown for a time and then goes away. I hope that you found this video helpful. This is just stage one of error handling. I'll do some more videos on error handling, but this is a good start. This gets you going in the right direction. Don't just do async await without catching your errors and doing something with them. And also make sure that inside of your tries, when you're fetching that you're checking those status codes for the things that are uh, uh, technically a response so the call did not fail but definitely not the answer that we're wanting i hope that you found this video helpful uh, if you did please comment below with what you thought stay tuned for more videos and as always have a great day mm -hmm.